what we use, we use two kinds of chemicals over here. Uh, if you follow me, I'll show them to you. Oh, great. Okay. Now you don't you don't try to purify it in any way to remove minerals. No. You can't do that without no. lo that volume of water. No, I you, imagine. You, you don't. So the first thing you have to do is you have to make sure that the water is softened. Okay. You mm -hmm. have to first you have to know if your water your source water that you're getting is it hard. You know, okay. if it's hard, you have to soften it. Right. The water that we get from the burrow here is somewhat hard. So this shack behind you is our water shack, and in there oh. is a pumping system that has two softener pumps. And we have a, a salt mixture that we use to pump into the water. It softens the water. That that mixture is then pumped into this tank under the ground here. That lid is the top of a tank car. The tank car is actually underground. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> it's a buried under, under there. Buried it's, it's a full-size tank car. Yep, full-size tank car buried underground. Wow. And that also can tap into and feed the water tower. Okay. So the water tower gets treated water, the tank car gets treated water, and the plug that's on the ash track also gets treated water. So all okay. this water softens this into the piping. Oh yeah, look at that. Right. That delivers it all to the various areas. On top of that, what we do every single day, at the end of the day, we will do a chemical analysis of the boiler. Okay, so at the end of the day, the fireman will take a small cup, get a sample of the boiler water, they'll open up one of the glasses, and we have a, a, a line that's tapped into the drain that can get the water, and they'll put it on the water testing bench here, and the following morning, we will do a chemical analysis of it. And so we check for TDS, mm -hmm. which is total dissolved solids, we check for polymers, we check for a pH, and we check for alkalinity. Okay, so we check all these things, and we and also sulfites and we're basically mm -hmm. making sure that we we have our own numbers our own range where we want that to sit in and depending on where that range is determines how much or how little this treatment we use okay to adjust those numbers okay so what you're looking at here this is oxygon okay this comes from a, a guy named mitch george he has a company called cannonball and he's pretty much one of the biggest suppliers for boiler treatment for a lot of the steam locomotives around the country. His stuff is fantastic. He's a pleasure to work with. He knows his stuff. His treatment works very well. And that's what we use. So we have Oxy gone here and Scale gone here. So in the simplest terms, this is essentially an oxygen scavenger. You want to remove the oxygen from the water. Okay, the less of that you have, the less of ability you have for corrosion, for oxygen pitting, issues like that. So this helps lower those numbers and lower those problems. This right here, this is a scale scavenger. This helps with the TDS levels. And what this does, this doesn't get rid of the TDS. It doesn't get rid of the solids. What it does is it suspends them. Okay. Okay, so it doesn't stick onto the sheets. Oh, okay. Stick onto the firebox especially the crown sheet. If you didn't have this, what would happen over a period of time is all that scale and all that calcium and all that gunk that's in there will start to fuse to the sheets. In particular, it'll start to fuse to the top of the crown sheet and it creates insulation. Yeah. You don't want that insulation mm -hmm. because right, what you have on the other side is fire. So the more insulation you have on the other side of that fire, yeah. the hotter a fire you gotta get to right. produce the same amount of steam, okay? So in order to, to minimize that, you use a product like this, which minimizes that, adhe that adhesion to the sheets okay. and keeps it in suspension. <laughs> and then between all of this and blowdown, so we do what's called a boiler blowdown. Every steam locomotive has a system for a, a blowdown system. In fact, if you want, I can show you on this engine where okay. ours are. Dave, quick question. Yeah. He had asked, um, he asked how, how frequently we drain the boiler. And I said, in our case, we, we drain it every 31 service days. Yeah, after after the service cycle is done, we'll drain the boiler. And he yeah. asked back in, you know, historically, how often would they have been draining the boiler? When these trains were in operation, do you think? No different. Now, so basically, um, there are four service cycles for a steam motor. You, you have a 31-day service cycle, you have a 92-day service cycle, you have an annual, and you have the big one, 
the 1472 day service cycle okay. or 15 years, whichever mm -hmm. comes first. Now, what's the service day? The service day is any day I have a fire in the firebox and I have pressure on the gauge. That's considered one service day. So I could have a fire in this box, I could have just one pound of pressure on the gauge, not turn the wheel, mm -hmm. have it sitting here all day, and I have to count that as one service okay. day. You get 31 of those, and you gotta do a boiler wash. It's essentially the steam locomotive version of a oil change. Okay, for a car. yeah. Who, no, who mandates, is that uh, some the kind of a... The the FRA. I was wondering about that, okay. The Federal Railroad Administration. Okay. They mandate that. Okay. That was, uh, in, in the early days, that was from the ICC, which then eventually transferred over to the FRA. If you look, and you can go online and look at the ECFR, if you look at uh, 49, uh, CFR 49, uh, Part 230, uh -huh. that's for steam locomotive inspection. And okay. And all those rules are in there. I'm familiar with the CFR since I fly drones. Yeah, and I have 49 is transportation. Regulated by the FAA. Yep. yep, 49 is transportation and 230 mm -hmm. is for the steam locomotive. You know, so it'll give you all the specs as far, and it gives you all the condemning limits and you know, the information as far as travel, how many springs you're allowed to have wow. broken, you know, stay bolts, clearances, uh, mandatory washes, safety valves. It's all they, in they still have all that stuff on it in it's, one yeah, file, it's, even it's though these engines are 100 plus years old. Yeah, <laughs> and all this basically all the rules from the FAA, a lot of the rules from the FAA, all came from the FR. Uh, yeah, you okay. know, uh, as far as hours of operation, in service <laughs> rules, stuff a lot, like, but that was all inspired from that. So, uh, so that's how the service day cycle works. Now, on our engines, the blow down valve is tapped between the gauge here at the bottom of the mud rig. Okay, most steam locomotives are tapped usually around here and mm -hmm. they'll point out this way okay. or the other way but on this on our engines we tap in the center and we have shoot it shoot it down shoot it down now, okay the downside about that is you can't just open up the blow down valve anywhere on the track because you'll just blast out yeah. all the ballast in the track yeah but we are very fortunate here because the water here is pretty good mm -hmm. and it's very consistent and so the way we have we maintain our water chemistry in our engines is in the mornings we will do a set blow down on the blow down pad off this track so the track goes down past the coal dock past the ash pit past the water plug and just past the water plug there's a pad okay and it's just got a steel she a piece of sheet metal there mm -hmm. and we park the engine there we have a spot for it and we'll blow down the engine there maybe three or four times in the morning throughout the day we have another system that we use if you look at our track at the railroad, you'll see this clean line down the center of the track. Uh -huh. It's being sandblast or you know steam clean. That's because of the surface blow down. Okay. So this device up here, you can hardly see it. it looks like a Dutch oven. Okay, there. I see. That I see. Yeah, I see it. That's the uh -huh. centrifuge. Okay. So okay. what happens with this? On this system, we skim the water from the top. Oh. Okay. So right here, this is skimming the water and blowing all the water from the bottom. Right. Mud you know, the accumulate. Sediment that's and stuff. The, yeah, that's why they call it yeah. the mud ring, because all okay. the mud settles to the bottom. And it's the easiest way to get it out of the boiler and into the atmosphere and out onto the ground. Throughout the day, we'll actually skim the surface of the water with hmm. what's called a surface blowdown. Okay. So you have a shutoff valve that you open it up all the way, and then you have a regulating valve that regulates how much of that water is being skimmed. Oh, okay. And then what happens is it goes through that centrifuge, separates all the gunk and all the scale from the water, throws the water down onto the ground through a drain pipe. So that's why you see that clean line over here. Oh, okay, interesting. So between the chemistry, the water treatment, the, the boiler washes, the blowdowns, and the surface blowdown mm -hmm. is how we keep our water on a good level. Yeah, is there a reason why you do the surface? Is it because the organics can, can, can accumulate on the surface? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's very turbulent up there. Uh -huh. uh, it's it's a good spot to, to, to clean uh, and basically if you ever boil like a pot of water and you see all those bubbles yeah uh, mm -hmm. you know like for pasta and stuff like that you know well that the same thing is happening uh -huh. on these okay. you know so mm -hmm. it's a good spot to get all that okay and basically keep it clean you know because uh, basically when you're running the engine the water's really turbulent yeah so yeah. it's not settling down here because it's just it's it's cycling gotcha. basically what happens is the cooler water is at the bottom. And the hottest water is basically right here. So yeah. the cooler water is here, has nowhere to go, goes up here, cycles like this, mm -hmm. hits the front tube sheet, goes down, 
like this. Okay. It cycles like that. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't realize that. Yeah, okay. that's basically how most of the water cycles. And then you'll notice when the water's being injected into it, you've got the injector here. If you, you find, if you follow the pipe, the pipe goes all the way up here to the check, which is right at the Oh, top. yeah. Okay. And that the reason for that is it, it's by design. They do that intentionally because boilers are actually a pretty in a, in a sense, they're a pretty bad design, in a sense. Yeah. Uh, and that is, they are, they are, they're very susceptible, susceptible to thermal shock, especially steam locomotive boilers. You know, right. stationary boilers, it's one pressure, it's one temperature constantly. Mm -hmm. Not so with these. You go into a station, it's not as hot. You're going up a big hill, you get it screaming hot. Well, the boiler's doing this constantly. Mm -hmm. okay? Well, anytime you're running steam, and you've got the throttle open, you're consuming water. You got to you got to put back in yep. what the engineers consuming. Right. So okay. that's what the injectors do. They put if you put too cold of water back in there, the you got a problem. Cold. Yeah. And the water is relatively cold compared to the, the boiling water that's mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. And you also have to remember that when water is pressurized, it takes it takes more heat. It, it you know it it boilers at when it's when it's pressurized. Yeah. It takes it will boil at a higher pressure. Right. If right. that makes sense. Okay, right. that's It'll, why- It has to be a hotter temperature to boil, is that right? Right, yeah. right. So, right. so you know, when, when the water's getting boiled and it's under pressure, it's, it's gonna take, a, it'll probably boil around like 312 degrees. Yeah. I think around there, I could, I, I, I think I'm wrong on that, but it's a little higher. I don't know mm -hmm. the exact number off the top of my head, it's been a while. But uh, it boils at a higher, at a, at a higher temperature when it's under pressure. Right. When it's not under pressure, and you're talking about atmospheric pressure, it's like you know a little over 200 degrees. That's why on the boiler explosions, when there's a boiler explosion, it's such a catastrophe, because all of a sudden all that pressurized water is instantly exposed to the atmosphere, and it all instantly boils and expands. And steam right. Basically Anybody expands standing near would be boiling. Right. And ba <laughs> basically. steam basically expands 1600 to one. So that's why it just you know wow. just erupts instantly. So. Yeah. Um, that's why they have these pipes all the way up to the front because it mm -hmm. minimizes the thermal shock. You're okay. getting as, as far away as you can yeah, from that the makes hottest sense. part of the boiler, you know, to minimize that thermal shock that right. you're putting in there. Because anytime you're putting cold water in, you're shocking the engine. Yeah. So the yeah. farther you can get away from the hottest source, the less damage, the less shock you're doing to the engine. Makes sense. So mm -hmm. that's why it's done that. The feed water pumps and heaters like what 611 have they are much more efficient because they actually can preheat the water okay get it well above boiling point and pump that water okay. right in okay. this is not that right <laughs> this is much yeah. more you're, you're basically taking tender cold water mixing it with the steam that condenses back to steam or condenses back to water and heats okay. it up a little bit but not quite as much <laughs> interesting there you go wow a lot of great information yeah well, I thank you very much for the tour and, and all this information. And yeah, sure. again, once again, happy birthday to you. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> sure.